Early 2017, I produced a video talking about how good a time it was to get into 3D printing. But I also ended that video discussing my predictions for 3D printing in 2017. Well, I thought it'd be about time, you know, now we're at the end of 2017, starting 2018, to see if any of those came true and what we actually saw in the 3D printing space. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So 2017 has been a roller coaster ride for the 3D printing community. It's seen a lot of trends, a lot of things that have happened that have been really good, and a few things that have happened that have been less than good. And as I said at the start of this year, I actually made a video discussing my predictions of what we might see. Um, and I'm gonna hit on those points and also a few additional things that I've noticed trending in 2017 in the 3D printing space. So let's start with number one. I predicted that doors would close. I said that companies uh, would start to shut down because of a glut of 3D printing and filament manufacturers. And thankfully, we haven't really seen that. A lot of established manufacturers at the start of 2017 are still with us, which is awesome. Um, there has been some closures, but none that are hugely notable, except for a handful. And um, I'm gonna start with Tech Shop. So Tech Shop, if you, if you don't know, was a sort of subscription-based workshop situation where you could go do training and go use workshop tools at a location and pay uh, quite a lot of money to do so and also use locker space to store projects. Um, and pretty much without any telling anyone or giving anyone forewarning, they went bankrupt and closed doors um, subject immediately not too long ago. So that was a little bit sad and I did a whole stream actually discussing my thoughts on viability of maker spaces and you can check out that here if you're interested. Uh, but that definitely was a bit of a blow. Um, and Tech Shop never really made it to Australia. I think they were planning to open one somewhere in Adelaide or something. But uh, regardless, that's done. Um, and we also saw the uh, destruction of Tico. Um, I will touch on crowdfunding campaigns because that was one of my other predictions. But look, we kind of saw it coming at the start of 2017. And officially it was announced not too long ago that they're completely bankrupt and basically everyone's stuffed. It is what it is. Kickstarter projects I've talked about so many times in the past. It's basically a donation um, and they made so many mistakes early on and the early testing units weren't good. They had to re-engineer things and they ran out of money. So that is what it is. Tico's uh, never going to be delivered around the world to their backers. I think only a few hundred were made and they weren't very good. So we saw a few closures, but luckily not many. A um, lot of established manufacturers and suppliers are still with us, which is awesome. Okay, number two, I predicted we would see a rise in inferior products in the 3D printing space. And uh, yeah, 2017 has been the year of the GearBest. Um, GearBest has flooded the market with Chinese 3D printers. And in some cases, they have been spectacularly good for money. Uh, good value for money, such as this CR10, which very much deserves its reputation as a fantastic budget 3D printer. But in some cases, it's been less than good. We've seen a lot of machines shipped with huge quality control issues. We've seen a lot of machines shipped with uh, control boards that catch fire and a lot of machines with very little support from manufacturers. In fact, uh, with lots of Facebook groups propping up these lower end machines. Um, it also it kind of sort of came to a climax for me personally, testing the Flying Bear Tornado Kit, um, which I just had a horrible time with. And what was interesting was the backlash from the company was so strong um, as to my malicious review on YouTube of their machine. But unfortunately, yeah, the quality control has just dropped right to the bottom um, and you mostly get what you pay for with this. Also, it's worth mentioning the GearBest affiliate links. I have used them in some videos like my Makerspace, uh, budget Makerspace tutorial series that I have used GearBest affiliate links. But the issue with affiliate links is it makes you want to try to sell a product to get people to use your affiliate link to purchase it. Um, I personally wouldn't try to sell a product that's inferior because you'd get it and a few months later, you'd be like, Angus, you lied to me um, and I'd lose your, <laughs> lose your trust. But um, we have seen a lot of uh, reviews that have popped up around GearBest, which are basically advertisements. So yes, that one did come true. We did see an increase in inferior 3D printers, 
but we also saw an increase in good 3D printers as well. A lot of established manufacturers have been gradually improving their products, which is fantastic to see. Um, we did just see the launch of the Prusa Mark III. I think some people are just getting some now, like um, Joe 3D Maker Noob's got his, um, which is really cool. Like it's a machine with lots of improvements and something that we did need to see, not just rehashing of the same tech. Like there are actually improvements in how the machine functions and usability side of things, which is really, really cool. Number three was more crowdfunding. And yes, we did just see more crowdfunding projects and not all of them were bad, I'll be honest. Um, I tested the Moai early this year and the Moai was a fantastic SLA kit at a very good price point for an SLA with an actual galvometer, like a spinning mirror array with a laser. Um, that, that got delivered and a lot of people are making fantastic prints with their their, their Moai from Pio Poly. Um, but there was also a lot of you know, really hard sell commercialized campaigns where they're really sexy with the marketing, like the QB bot. We also ads for that. Um, I, I'm as yet to see how that goes. It's still quite early days for that campaign. Um, Olo, I mean, I went and saw the guys from Olo at the Bay Area Maker Fair, and there you sort of recognized me pretty quickly. So, yeah, that's not going to get delivered in 2017 either, and it may well go the way of Tico, who knows. Um, so yeah, going back to crowdfunding, it is very much a gamble. I did get my bevel finally earlier this year, which is a, uh, a 3D scanner you plug into your smartphone. Um, I made you a review of it. To be honest, it's a toy. It's a bit of a gimmick. It's not going to get any really useful 3D scans out of it, at least in my experience. So yeah, crowdfunding is what it is. And we did see more crowdfunding, but I've just had a look and to be honest, there's not many 3D printing campaigns anymore. So I think they're starting to taper off. I think the, the new hype is not 3D printing, it's going to be something else, like VR or drones. The next big thing. Prediction number four was that multi-material 3D printing would become more popular and easier, and kind of. This one sort of came true. Um, multi-material is still pretty uncommon. That is, printing, for example, with a rigid and flexible material, or printing with a soluble support but multi-color 3D printing has exploded thanks to a few key players. Uh, we had the Prusa multi-material unit um, gain a lot of lot of following, a lot of traction. I've got one, I've been testing it. It's very easy to use. There is the Mosaic Palette, uh, Palette Plus, for example, which I've been testing again, works really well. Um, but both these units, I, I've tried the, um, the Prusa multi-material with a semi-flex, from Fibrology, Fibrology, um, and it didn't work. It didn't didn't print the semi-flex. I don't think, think it withdrew properly. So multi-material is still pretty uncommon, but multi-color is definitely becoming more and more popular. Um, and we've seen technology like the DaVinci color printer, which actually puts an ink down each layer with it, sort of an inkjet head to color FDM prints with full color, which is really, really quite a cool technology. So. Yes, we've seen a lot more multi-color FDM based technologies, but not really more multi-material, at least yet. Um, there is some machines on the horizon, like the Zortrax Inventure, which is meant to make soluble supports easier, but as yet, it hasn't really gained much of, a, uh, much of an uptake. My final prediction for 2017 was the death of ABS plastic use in FDM 3D printers. Um, I actually made a video about this not too long ago, talking about how it might be, in my, in my eyes, obsolete because of improved material technologies such as polycarbonate blends, which offer the same printability, but better strength and toughness and temperature resistance. But look, um, honestly, this hasn't really changed. ABS at the start of 2017 was still not used very often by most people, like an open frame 3D printer cannot print ABS very well. Most people will deviate towards PLA or maybe PETG. Um, end of 2017, that hasn't really changed. If people like to print ABS, they're still going to print ABS. And if people like to print PLA, they're still going to print PLA. Like I haven't seen an uptake or a decrease of ABS. It's still not very common, but I don't see it dying. I saw a lot of comments, a lot of very valuable comments from you guys on that video I made about ABS being obsolete, who said, look, I know the, the other combinations of formulations of printing materials are great, but they're too expensive. And I totally get that. Um, PC Max from Poly, Polymaker is horrendously expensive. Whereas ABS is dirt cheap and the increase in uh, strength might not be worth it to you. So yeah, I may have to backtrack a little bit on this and say ABS plastic will continue to be used, just not very much compared to other filaments on the market. Then we can all be happy, right?
So those were my predictions for 2017 in the 3D printing space. And we're coming up to 2018 now. So what I would love to hear from you guys in the comments is what you think will happen in 2018. Personally, I think this gear vest bubble thing is going to burst. Uh, you, know, you can only saturate a market so much with 3D printers, which may or may not have quality control issues. Uh, I think something's going to happen there. And uh, look, I want to touch on the YouTube and Patreon issues as well very quickly, because as a YouTube creator, 2017 has been a very interesting time. Let me tell you, we've had the whole demonetization thing just explode out of control. We had uh, had the YouTube kids issues where lots of channels were had to be deleted very quickly because of issues with um, not very nice content being played on the YouTube Kids app. Um, and very recently we've had the Patreon changes where they've changed their fee structure where it actually charges you guys the fees rather than charging me the fees. Um, and that's obviously upset a lot of people and I totally respect your decision to pull out of Patreon. Um, later in 2018 I will probably have a different approach to keeping uh, this sustainable. But I do really appreciate the support, guys, because it's been a pretty rocky road for YouTube creators. Um, uh, oh, and we saw VidMe die, unfortunately, as well. That was a promising alternative to YouTube in terms of uploading content. But yeah, guys, let me know in the comments below what you think 2018 holds in the world of 3D printing. I also believe that other making technologies will become more popular as they get more affordable. 3D printing has reached a point where most people can afford a printer, but now we're starting to see laser cutters and CNC machines and various other technologies which are useful for creating things uh, digitally, digital to, to physical real world objects, becoming lower cost. So I think personally that those objects and machines are going to become more popular in 2018. Anyway guys, hope you found this video useful. Hope you're having a fantastic holiday period with your loved ones and family. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys, bye. Rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit.